actually have no guests tonight, so, um, <laughs> so we're going to get to talk about whatever we want. And I'm not sure what that exactly is yet, <laughs> but, um, but, but anyway, um, I wanted to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. It's a little belated, but, um, but it's a wonderful holiday, and, uh, and I had a really good time. And um, I got a whole bunch of flowers, which was really cool, so I'm happy. But, um, but we, we, we've got some things to talk about anyway. Um, but uh, you know, last week we, we sort of um, didn't get to talk about some things that we were going to talk about because <laughs> we had a very full set last week. We had seven people on set, so it was, um, it was very good. And hopefully we'll get, uh, get those people back again um, right. A lot of great, sometime great soon. conversation. Yeah. Um, not sure where Renee is tonight. Um, Renee is not here. I hope, uh, I hope Renee is okay. Um, if you're out there, Renee, give us a call. Um, we didn't, uh, didn't hear from you today, so... Um, so I was sort of expecting you'd be here, mm -hmm. but but um, hope everything's all right and Renee's not sick or something. But give us a call if you're out there. Um, anyway, we actually, um, we were going to talk, there were things we were going to talk about last week, but sure. uh, one of the things we were going to talk about is, is the opera. We, Tara and I went to see the opera oh. last week, um, a week back, at the Guard, which was so cool. It was, yeah. um, it was wonderful. We went and saw um, Lucia de Lammermoor. Um, Sponsored by Lomistic Village? Yeah, it was very cool. I, I like opera, and, um, and I had a great time. We, we had the uh, opera dinner first at the Guard, and it was really, the, the Guard's a really great place. Um, yes. And, and hopefully we'll get somebody and from the Guard. very interesting if you haven't seen it since the renovation. Yeah, it, it was great. We had a lovely dinner there and, um, and met some nice people. We wound up um, <laughs> having dinner with some nice people from Higginham and some, another couple that were from... Uh, from Salt Lake City, whose kids were married. And yeah, they were. They shared. They had grandchildren in common, so it oh. was. Um, it was very cool. But uh, we had a very nice dinner with them, and uh, had a very nice opera, and uh, had a great time. It was really nice, although it was incredibly cold. Um, trying to get back to the car afterwards, but um, oh yeah, outside that was one oh, of those was, it, yeah, it was blustery, that. windy, negative, below zero Fahrenheit nights. Yeah, it was terrible. Even yeah. with my super long touch me coat on, I was freezing. But um, but the opera was great, and uh, and hopefully we'll get to go to some more operas at the um, the guard. It's very cool. So. And I didn't realize, but at the opera was the um, um, was it um, Isaac? Is a is a is a youth opera company or a youth a youth, uh, a youth art school opera school that um, that, that uh, is here in London. And uh, they have uh, an agreement with the guard. The kids get to go to the operas and a bunch of thirteen-year-old kids. Bunch of thirteen, like yeah, two dozen thirteen-year-old kids at the opera. Imagine um, that. They're they're off in, in class at this school writing their own operas. Yeah. How cool is that? And uh, that's, yeah, that's they have a, a real a real interest. In it. So there, uh, it's interesting to have, you know, like right here in New London, you know, yeah. basically the State Street. There's an opera company. <laughs> Yeah, it's very cool, and uh, and certainly. Where's your mic? Behind me. 
Are you sitting on it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, slight, slight, uh, yes. <laughs> slight technical difficulty. Tara is sitting on her mic. <laughs> details, details. <laughs> okay. Well, no matter. Yes. So, so anyway, that was a great time. And, um, and uh, we, we hopefully, um, I'm thinking maybe we'll get somebody from the guard to come on at some point. But it was a good time. And I ran into somebody I knew at the end. Uh, yes. My, my, an old friend who, at the end of the evening as we were walking out, came and grabbed me. Um, somebody that turns out works at the guard. <laughs> she works like three jobs. So it was like one and of them. has been there for like 10 years. <laughs> yeah. One of them is at the guard. So it was really cool. Um, but, uh, but it was a great time. So I'm mm -hmm. really happy. And uh, so I had a good Valentine's Day. I got flowers. I went to see uh, opera. Well, the opera wasn't. Well, OK. Yeah, the opera was not a Valentine's gift, but um, but it was nice. It was a, it was a really good time. So anyway, um, but for Valentine's dinner, you did get to um, listen to the uh, Coast Guard a cappella. That us. was very cool. Yes, we uh, we were at um, two wives. We were two wives the other night, where they were serving heart shaped pizzas. Heart shaped, <laughs> yeah, so cute. And the Coast Guard uh, a cappella singers were there. It was yep. very cool. Um, it's nice. We have this wonderful Coast Guard Academy right here, <laughs> right here in uh, New London, and uh, they sent singers to the Two Eyes Pizza. How cool is that? And they were very good. Well, I imagine they had an agreement. They, they probably got some pizza and, and well, drinks so. for, uh, <laughs> for showing <laughs> up. I would certainly hope they did. But, uh, but that was nice. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see that. So, so it, was a good, it was a good Valentine's Day. And the weather's been nice, so I'm happy. No more snow. No more snow. Anyway, um, I know True Colors is coming up. You've got a True Colors thing, which we couldn't get on the capture cam because the capture There's no capture cam, cam is down, unfortunately. Um, it's non-existent. Yeah. It's missing. It's missing. There's no <laughs> camera there. No, well, I saw the stand. I didn't look yeah. at the camera. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not there. So. <clears throat> Yeah. This is the theme this year for True Colors. <laughs> I belong. Uh, if you recognize this, if you go to True Colors, uh, OurTrueColors.org, you'll be able to look at the conference guide. Um, it's very colorful. Um, True Colors is the nation's largest uh, GLBT queer youth conference. Um, it, this year, it's Friday, March 11th, and Saturday, March 12th, at the University of Connecticut stores. And um, it's a wonderful. For pe for a lot of people, life changing experience. Yes. To um, to go to the school, it's it's and on Friday they the a lot of school systems will actually uh, provide buses for groups of kids for classes that want to go and and you end up with you know twelve hundred, <laughs> two thousand. Um, yeah, it's a lot of kids. Kids running around Yukon all perfectly comfortable in their own skin in a community where they're accepted and loved and cared for and don't have their hair lit on fire because they're different. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. yeah, that was an awful story. I'm but let uh, you talk about that. But, uh, oh, well. So you've, you've got the backstory on that one coming up? N no, not, uh, not any terrible details, just that there was a kid on a bus in um, Middletown, Ohio, on his way home from school. and. I guess it was a 15-year-old and two 17-year-olds accosted him on the bus and lit his hair mm. on fire. Um, they're uh, suspended from school now, facing criminal charges. But um, sort of an unfriendly the, act. It's a very unfriendly act. Don't 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 light your peers on fire. Um, uh, the fact that that has to be said. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, when they were interviewing the 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 kid, he said, you know, they've been made fun of all throughout school. I've been teased and. And uh, it's just not right. <laughs> I mean, it's not the first time, I, obviously, we've heard of that sort of thing and sort of a hazard of being in our community. Sure. And, and I don't know the backstory on why these kids were picking on him. I don't want to um, yeah, well, draw the conclusion that, that right. he's, he's gay or anything, but just bullying and teasing in general is unacceptable. Right. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, certainly um, being perceived as gay in, in in a lot of schools is enough reason. Yeah, yeah, awful thing. But anyway, True Colors is wonderful. True Colors is wonderful. It's a big deal, and um, and it, it's 
just a, you know, it's a really wonderful thing for youth um, to go to. There's um, and there adults as well. and for adults as well. There's uh, there's opportunities to volunteer at True Colors um, that you can get in touch with them through the through the website ourtruecolors.org. Um, you can register for the conference. Um, if you're strapped for cash and you're a student, they even have um, student scholarships you can sponsor a youth. Um, and I believe they even have like a work program where if you volunteer to work one day, they give you a significantly reduced uh, ticket price. Um, but students, it's only I think it's only like 25 bucks for both days or something like that. Don't quote hmm. me. Go to the website and find out. But yeah. Anyway, we'll talk more about that. But uh, we actually have a phone call, so I think I know who this is. But uh, but we'll take it anyway. We'll take it anyway. <laughs> Good evening, NLC Trans. You're on the air. Um. Hello. Hello. Um, Hi. I was just wondering, how does it feel to live a normal life as a tranny? <laughs> I'm sorry. As a what? As a tranny. As a, as a tranny. Um, because Living I know I have a lot of friends, and I'm just asking as, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you're asking to try to get us upset and get a rise out of us. No, I'm, no, I'm not trying to be funny. Okay. Um, it, you're asking how it was to live our lives as a tranny? As, yes. Which is it's kind of a funny term, which I, I don't know. Um, I, you know, we're certainly transsexuals. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 then yeah, it, it, truthfully, certainly for me, I've been a transsexual all my life. I just didn't know it <laughs> for a long period of time. But um, but um, it was very difficult. It was very difficult, and uh, and it's much much better now. Okay. But, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think that was somebody laughing in the background, but um, but. But yeah, it's um, it's a long, hard road, but it but it does it you know it gets much much better. And thank you for the call, by the way. But um, but it does get better once you sort of accept who you are. Yeah, um, self acceptance and honestly, to a lo um, you know, for, for for me in particular, um, getting my hormone balance right, which is very important, is very important um, to sort of. Finding that sense of calm, yeah. um, and uh, you know, not want no, not wanting to strangle a cat every morning when I wake <laughs> up. Um, yeah, right. it, you, you would be surprised. Um, you know, I, I know it, it's sort of hard to sort of. Well, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people understand it, but but it's sort of hard to, to, to know how that feels um, when your hormones are out of whack. It really messes you up. <laughs> um, it, it really it does make a huge difference to right. get that when straight. When Final. you're swimming in the wrong, entirely the wrong hormone, it yeah, it's it's like wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and once and once you finally manage to bring that under control, and then of course bring your um, presentation in line with your actual gender. Yeah, yeah. Things become things do become quite peaceful. When when when, when people start seeing you and reacting to you in the gender that you know you are. Instead of the gender they they perceive you as, yeah, um, right. yeah, things start to really click and fall into place. Yeah, um, living with essentially living living with a chemical imbalance in my brain is really um, distracting, and um, you know, in in that case, in 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 my case, having way too much testosterone um, made me a very violent person. Uh, growing up, I, I had the police called on me twice for uh, domestic violence when I was uh, 16 and again at 18 because I was terrorizing my family. Yeah. And it was all because um, I was living with a chemical imbalance and I hit puberty and the testosterone skyrocketed and, yes. and my brain was screaming for estrogen and it wasn't getting it and, you know, I had a daily roid rage. Yeah, but yeah it's, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing what the effect is with that. I, um, it, it really is hard to sort of perceive that, but um, but it's uh, it's just sort of sort of like um, living for me anyway. Living every day for all those years, um, it's sort of in the you know in the wrong gender. It's sort of like I was surviving, but it's like going to a job you hate every day yeah. and with no hope of ever getting out of it and just just trudging along and. Eventually, you just can't take it anymore, and and you're existing. 
I can tell you that, yeah, and it's, it's, right. you're alive, but barely, and, and that, right. I, I know that it, once I start a transition, just, just sort of that point where you reach self-acceptance, <laughs> and you say, okay, this is what I am, I'm okay with it, and I can do something about it, is an amazing thing. Right. But, but I remember that first time, sort of the first time that I actually ventured out in public, um, in, in, Female presentation. My, yeah, presenting as female, which was uh, was a big deal, and it is for for all, right. you know, people that are trying. I don't think any of us will ever forget. You that never first forget that, time. but but it was one of those things that um, that I remember that very very vividly, and sort of that the first time that people were perceiving me as female, and it, you know, it was of course the fact that nobody was driving me behind a truck helped too, but. But, um, no, the guy was dragging you to a dinner table. <laughs> yes, I, was, mm -hmm. I went out with a boyfriend and, and he took me out to dinner. And nobody even noticed. And it, that, just that sort of understanding that people are perceiving you as female, it was the most incredible thing. I was on an adrenaline high for three days. <laughs> I really was. I, you know, I was like, I don't want this to end. And I, I think it was at that moment that I, I really fully understood that I cannot go back. Right. I mean, it's it's impossible to. Well, it was imp I found it was, in the end, impossible for me to present as a gender that I'm actually not. Right. It was far too painful. And I it is. and we've talked about this before. And I was on my way out. Yeah. I certainly w wasn't going to be around that much longer if I didn't do something about it. And choosing to transition was, in a real sense, choosing life, Absolutely. choosing to survive the yeah. condition. Yeah. And. Um, Immense weight lifted, um, depression going away, anger going away, um, relationships became easier because I was being easier on myself. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is an amazing thing. And, yeah. um, even, um, even before you really sort of go out in public, the first times you take some tentative steps outside, um, in, in our case presenting as female, um, for uh, female to male presenting as male, um, the chance that someone might see you yeah. is even a huge deal. Yeah, yeah. walking the uh, walking around the block at two in the morning, <laughs> is, you know, just the chance that somebody would see you is was incredibly empowering at that time in my life. Yeah, it's an it's an amazing to sort of look back at it now and go, oh my God, you know. Um, why did I wait so long? But um, and it was so. It, it ends up being very humbling when you go to something like True Colors. Yes. Where you know all these seven, eight, twelve, fifteen, eighteen-year-olds are running around. You know, uh, we're here. We're queer, and we're proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like I'm sitting. The first time I went, I'm sitting there with my coat pulled tightly around me, hoping no one will notice me. And it's like they're really putting me to shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and truly that is wonderful that, um, I mean, this kind of thing didn't really exist when I was a kid, and it's so wonderful that it does now, and that, that um, I, I mean, I really think we've made great strides. Yes. Uh, it, the fact that, that um, it is, I think, a, a lot more, a lot easier for, for young kids now to be sort of accepted, and I'm not saying that it's an easy, uh, that, that, that it's easy in any way, but I think that, um, that there is a lot more acceptance now, and, uh, and it really is There's wonderful. more discussion, I think, and there's more knowledge that there's other people out there like you. Yes. And that just wasn't around before. Yeah, right. I know what, God, when I was growing up, I, I was convinced that, like, there was myself and one other person on the planet, maybe. Yeah. You know? and, uh, yeah. and now we have at least three in our town. We, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, three known quantities with probably <laughs> many more. No, we, yeah, you know, we, that, that's that's sort of an inside joke that somebody at once told us that there were three in in this town, and and, uh, and apparently we weren't among them. <laughs> we weren't among them, <laughs> but there are actually a lot. It's 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 amazing. Um, yeah, I, we estimate on the conservative side at least one in every town in Connecticut. Yeah. At least one transsexual person for every town in Connecticut. Probably more. Yeah. Probably upwards of a solid one percent of the population. Yeah, which is drastically more than the um, the figure that you hear um, bandied about a lot, or have um, historically the, the one in ten thousand, yeah. 
which really probably only represents um, the number of people who have actually had the surgery. Mm. Um, but does have, not account <laughs> to everyone. And, and who aren't hiding. Who, who had sought out some kind of medical intervention so that right. they could be identified and then counted. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely lots more people who fall, and somewhere in the transgender spectrum, somewhere in the gender queer spectrum, who identify not necessarily with their standard acceptable male and female binaries. Right. And I yeah. still don't think, even at the um, estimation of 1%, I mean, I think it'll be a while before we actually get good numbers on yes. the uh, rate of occurrence of transsexualism in, in society is, I mean, it'll improve as things get safer. Just stick your head up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and certainly it's, it's safer here than it is in a lot of places, but there are still many places out there where, right. you, you, yeah, people, where you, I would be scared to death. Absolutely. Out. But, um, but I think that's getting better, and certainly, um, you know, in this part of the country and in many parts of the country now, it's, um, I mean, for myself, I basically, I'm going wherever I want, and, um, it, well, you know me. Yes. I have that sort of devil make care attitude, but um, I'm not going to hide. But, uh, but there are places where that could be somewhat dangerous. And, uh, you know they've got your mosaic out now, and they're altering your voice. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> you are so lying. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but it really is an amazing thing. Yeah. That whole that whole thing, and and. Um, and it, it it really puts to rest the whole notion that we in any way threaten or endanger children. Yeah. <laughs> they were there long <laughs> before <laughs> I was. Yeah. yeah. You know. Oh well. Um, oh well. But but yeah, it's um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> it's a good thing anyway. The true colors thing is wonderful, and uh, and the kids the kids are great. And they are so much fun to watch. And we'll probably be reminding you about it every week until it happens. Yes. Um. <coughs> anyway, um, so that's coming up. Hopefully, we have legislation coming up. Um, that's I believe still in the judiciary. But um, but we are going to be talking more and more about um, the upcoming legislation, the uh, adding um, gender identity or expression to the uh, the anti discrimination bill. Yes, we have to have Diana back on. Yes, to talk about the bill. So now that we're sort of back in session and the bill's been uh, or is getting raised, we ought to get a a, a number. And um, once we have that, we'll be asking for all of your support to contact your legislators and let them know that you support. Fairness and equality in Connecticut, yeah. e even for transgender people. Yeah, yeah, and as of you, as you have um, so uh, rightfully pointed out on many occasions, um, it really does apply. It does protect people that are not trans. Yeah, the whole notion of not being discriminated against because of your gender expression. Gender expression is 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 your appearance and your behavior. Um, you know, that you don't have to be transsexual, you know, for for a woman to to put on work boots and jeans and cut her hair short and wear a baseball cap, and be mistaken for a guy when she goes to enter the women's bathroom. Right, and, and this then is be happening. arrested by police right. for going into the wrong bathroom, and then winning her lawsuit against the police department. <laughs> and so this was something that happened in Grand, Grand Central, Central Station Terminal about yeah. two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Which it just sort of exemplifies the the point that that um, everybody has a gender identity yeah, and expression. This person was not trans, yeah. but but this kind of legislation would protect them. And um, yeah. if you have a uh, if you have a boss or a landlord that um, doesn't think you're manly enough or womanly enough, and uh, they don't approve of the way you dress or the way you behave. <laughs> And they decide to take it out on you by firing you, or uh, yeah, you can be discriminated against for something despite not being that thing. Right? Yeah, and you you don't have to admit to being that thing well, to um, say, right. well, I've been discriminated against right. for this reason. I'm not. In fact, <laughs> that's what this per. Th many of the youth that committed suicide in that uh, you know in in the uh, the last year or so. Um, were, were being teased for being gay when they weren't gay. Yeah. yeah. 
which yeah. is often overlooked when right in the commission of a crime it's let i mean it's the intent rather than the intent of the person committing it yeah. or the perceptions of the person committing it rather than the characteristics of the victim yeah yeah so it is important. And, uh, and it is. And frankly, to that end, I, I did want to mention, because it's gone by already, but on January 11th, the city of Harford, Court of Common, um, voted unanimously in favor of two ordinances which protect gender identity and expression from discrimination. So that's true in the city of Harford now. Yeah, very cool. And the bill that's, at the, uh, that, that's uh, being raised will, ext will, will um, similarly extend it to the entire state. Yeah. We actually have another phone call. So, did you want to take this? Sure. Good evening, NLC Trans. You're on the air. Hey, how you, how you guys doing tonight? Hello. Hey. Yeah, you guys have been on. Hello? Hello? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. So, how are you tonight? Yeah, just, just saying. I was just thinking, you guys have been on for quite a while, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. been on for a couple of years now, I think. Since uh, October couple years, 2008. Years. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of cool. It is, I think, you know. Um, I was curious, do you guys, every, every, you know, you're out there, do you guys ever get recognized from the show? I mean, I yes, it has happened. <laughs> yes, we do. It it's not, doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. Maybe uh, once every sure six months. Could. Yeah. Oh, Maybe. that's great. With, with positive feedback probably more often than not oh yeah, yeah. no there's some um, I, I don't think I've been recognized by anybody that actually walked up to me and said hey I recognize you from that show I don't like you yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> it's yeah it's actually pretty much always been good feedback and uh, it's it's actually yeah. been very cool and a lot of fun we actually um, Tara and I walked into a pizza place up kind of <laughs> we're up in Putnam or somewhere oh that's right that's and, right um, and uh, the girl there, the girl behind the waitress, counter. said, "I know you guys. <laughs> we're way up, way up north." But we walked like, into the wrong pizza place. Yes, that, 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 <laughs> that was a story. That was an amusing story, which we'll have to tell. But but um, but yeah, it's 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 really very nice to be recognized. Yeah, Putnam's a cool little town. Yeah, it's a cool little town. A lot yeah, of open, very open-minded people there. I was like, yeah, you know. And I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, you know. Sometimes I think you can be a little closer to a closer to a, a subject matter and so it's hard to sometimes see from the outside mm -hmm. looking in. Right. You know, I've, I've watched your show <clears throat> more than uh, a dozen times at least, a dozen and a half, just because I'm just flipping in and, oh, there's that show. Oh, well, thank I've mentioned you. it to other people. Thank you for watching. And have you seen that show, you know, all those street, blah, blah, it's a topic of interest. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, the feedback I'm getting is, that, you know, they're really bold. I mean, they're out there. They're, <laughs> they're doing it. You know, they're... They're saying it. They're meaning it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. and uh, you know you're reaching out. You're reaching people. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing something. Yeah. I and mean, you guys yeah. are. You know what I mean? I sense that. You know that you feel like you know it's 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 a, it's a difficult world we're in. And I mean, I'm sure you you know you encounter negativity. Sure. And it's just it's it's just common sense, right? Yeah. But, well, but I mean, I mean, you just I mean you're accepted out there in the world. I mean, people. We are. are. There's. You know, there's people are. are more uh, understanding than you give them credit for, and it's just a few ignorant, lingering ignorant people mm -hmm. out there that just can't, uh, yeah. you know, can't wrap their brain around it. But we're in a world now that you know, I mean, you know, information mm -hmm. superhighway and things are <laughs> there's a rapid uh, sense of knowledge, you know, about everything and anything, and you know, and you guys are just right at the front. So. I really think Connecticut is a, is a great place for us to be, in particular. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we run into a lot, we have a lot more acceptance, I think. Yeah, I, I, have, to, I have to say that, um, you know, it, there is some negativity out there, but honestly, we don't see that much. I have, certainly haven't seen that much of it, you know. I mean, I mean, there has been some big things that have affected my life, but, but in general, people, I think, really are very good. Yes, and, right. Um, there and are pockets of the country that are still... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm, always well, sort of, I'm always sort of pleasantly surprised at how good people are. Yeah. So. You're, it's a, yeah it, I mean, you know, you should just definitely take heart in the matter. That, uh, you know, yeah. Connecticut, sure. I think you're right. I think you're hearing on the head. Connecticut is very much more attuned to, you know, topical things. You know what I mean? And, right. and you know, accepting in general. I mean, just people, you talk to them, and they just are like, you know... You know, just live and let live, man. You know what I mean? That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I, I think that mentality 
for the the vast majority of the state, you know, um, I think that mentality really does win out. That sort of just live and let live. Um, there there are um, a, a few areas. The, there are a few uh, issues that that continue to come up, and and we want to keep pressing those as well. But um, you know, it, you're right. You're absolutely your point's well taken. That there is a lot of support out there, um, and uh, it's a good reminder. Yeah. I'm from the outside looking in, and then you guys are right so close to the situation. I think it can get overwhelming sometimes. But I mean, there's, there are other people out there that are that are you know they're just completely sympathetic to the situation, and yeah. they just you know yeah. we're we're in a much more evolved world we now than you know I think, and you know just you got you got to stick it and stick in there with it, and, you know take yeah. heart because then it's just it's, uh, yeah. you know you got you got you just want acceptance. I mean that. It's as simple as that. I mean, yeah. you want to be that uh, common to the American dream, <laughs> yeah. in yeah. my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. And the, the, the other interesting aspect is um, this outreach they were doing through the show has actually put us in contact with a number of people who, who identify as trans who were looking for somebody to talk to. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're also, when we're, when we're on the show here, we're also reaching out to folks um, who are dealing with their, with their own questions of... Uh, Absolutely. Of identity. And maybe feeling isolated. Yeah. 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 So there's that message of, well, you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So. And then given, in, given your own history, given all your own histories, I mean, that's just like, wow, you know, I mean, that's got to be really heavy for a lot of people. Like, wow, there are, there are, there are advocacies out there. There are. There are. You know I mean? People. It's, and that's, well, you know, that's, you know, I've been in my own uh, isolated situation other than, you know, not pertaining to, but. Sure. Uh, very similar to you know just lack of acceptance and uh, to, and there's advocacy groups and you know and it's, uh, those are like sanctuary to people who are yeah. being drowned by the you know right. you know whatever the, the the powers that be which are often very <laughs> uh, crippling to, yeah. you know, to be trying to break out so and and that's but I mean yeah that's another message sorry go ahead. That's a, another message that, that we do try to, to send out as well is that, you know, everybody's got problems. Everybody's dealing yes. with something. Um, most people have times in their lives when they experience something like you described that's, that, that isolates them where they, they, they need some support, they need to reach out. And, um, so, I mean, that's, that's definitely an area that we know people can relate to, even if they don't, can't relate to us on, you know, on the whole gender identity level. Um, Everybody's dealt with something in their life that's you know significant. You know, and, and that's true. And I mean, if you if you've helped one person, you've done it. I mean, no matter how long you've taken to do it, if you've helped one person change their lives and to move in the right direction, I mean, you know, you know, you can you can you've moved the mountain right there. You know what I'm saying? And in my opinion, one person yeah. is all that matters. And I mean, even I'm sure you're reaching much more, but I mean, one individual alone who's isolated who. You know who can you know you can reach out to and open up their you know yeah. their ideas or their thoughts or to you know acceptance in the world and they, they, you've set them on you've done you know, it's just one person is all in my mind and they've done it you know what I'm yeah saying? yeah I, I can I'm familiar but and the, we do try to shake it up we try to switch between advocacy shows and guest shows where we hopefully can bring you some interesting other kinds of information too. Um, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> definitely, you definitely diversified in certain, you know, political issues, whatever. I noticed that. Uh, in fact, um, what's his name? Um, oh, that we have. Yes, we have um, uh, Daryl uh, Venizio. Daryl Venizio. On, um, coming on uh, March 16th. 16th, I believe, yes. Um, He's going to be running for New London mayor this fall. Yeah, that's getting cool. Seems like a very nice, very nice man. Um, but, and, uh, what do you think of, of, of the, I didn't get the new governor of Miley there? What do we think of him? Like, well, yeah, what do you like, I, do you like I certainly governor? I like our new governor. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, and you this, know, this new tax package is pretty intense. I mean, you know, well, people yeah. are gonna people are gonna be critical of that. I know, but um, things are gonna get tough down the road. <laughs> well, you yeah, you know what they say: if nobody's mm. happy, it's probably a good compromise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what. Uh, we got to sacrifice has got to be made, and yes. for future, yes. just to mean bottom it's, line, got to be. You know. Right. It's it's yeah. untenable to to want the services back from the state and then also not want to 
paying for them. Right. right. And this economy is just, yeah. You know, what I'm worried about is that this, you know, excuse me, if they, you know, if they pass this whole thing, you know, if they pass this whole thing and then what, whatever, you know, what happens in Washington down the road, is that going to compound it for us? I mean, I mean, if we, if we go headlong into this yeah. conservative, you know, about this tax package where we're going to be, you know, and then, then Washington just decides, well, you know what, the federal, you know, the federal tax is a big major issue. So now we're going to have to you know, compound it so it's, it could, could even get worse than what we're seeing yeah, I, down the road. And, the, if, if the state goes and sets up a tax plan relying on certain funding from the federal government that down the road doesn't materialize, we're just back in another hole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, so something's just, you know, bottom line, all, all said and done, something's got to be done soon. Right? I mean, because it's just unsustainable, you know, the situation is unsustainable and we have to just uh, break out of it somehow, hopefully, and so if it's oh. possible at all. It, cer it certainly sounds like this is going to be the year for those conversations, both at the state and federal yeah, level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll be interesting. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And we'll get to hear a lot more of I'm our sure. governor's full name. Yes, I'm sure we will. Um, it's yeah, it's going to be an interesting year. Uh, yeah, the whole transportation thing about the super transportation sounds like it's going to be a great expense, but I don't know. I mean, that sounds like it'll be beneficial to a lot of people that well, I mean, train, I was, train anything they want to do. Yeah, I was hearing just, just, uh, just yesterday that the uh, Metro North New Haven corridor is the busiest commuter rail in the country. Yeah. That's right. Hmm. And it's 35 years old. Right, they're operating ancient equipment. We, we haven't made any investment in it in 35 years. Yeah. Um, it is. Yeah. <laughs> So we, on top of this being an unprecedented winter that took a bunch of cars out of service, we've been sort of neglecting it. Yeah, that's when it just come home our ass, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mass transit like is so important. heading into the warmer. Yeah, the thaw will be nice. Yes. A nice weekend <laughs> coming up. Yeah. She's already got a new bathing suit she's waiting to try out. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I have been told that I don't wear enough clothes, but you know what? That sounds like a challenge to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out bathing suit shopping. Your dress is a little more bolder than the, the most, most of the time it seems to me. Older, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, that's the pro. That's the pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. So sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to stop. <laughs> you guys got an hour show now, or is it a half hour? It's an half hour. hour. Yep. So. Mm. so we've got another 15 minutes. <clears throat> but then anyway, yeah. Well, it was nice talking to you guys. Uh, I just figured I'd call in and, you know, try to, yes. you know, just input a little bit there. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Another. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is it's always a good weekend. You too. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling. A wonderful call. My pleasure. That was so nice. And he's right. You know, we, we, we do talk a lot about the minority of people. Yeah. Um, and, and that is, that has been our focus, is, is, is to ensure that um, we, we can reduce that discrimination to as little as we can possibly manage. But when we're talking about it, we really are talking about a minority of people in Connecticut. Yeah. A minority of situations in Connecticut. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I honestly... Um, I can honestly say that when I started my transition, I was scared to death. Um, I, I truly thought that I would be a pariah. I thought everybody on the planet was going to hate me and that it was going to be, and that it was going to be horrible, that, um, that it was going to be just this incredibly difficult, horrible thing. Not that it wasn't difficult. It's a difficult to road. But, um, but I thought that, that it was, you know, I was going to get all this negative, um, you know, attention because of this. And, and I had reached a point in my life where, where I was in so much trouble that, that I was so miserable that I was willing to accept that. Yeah. Which is, is yeah. an incredible that's thing in desperation. itself. Desperation. But, um, but it didn't materialize. <laughs> you, sort of, you sort of sit there and roll around in your head, all right, if there's only one friend or family member that's going to stay by my side, who would I want it to be? Right. Because <laughs> you don't expect them all to stay Yeah. And, and quite honestly, um, I have been so pleasantly surprised at how well every, however, how well people have treated me, and I, I lost one friend yeah. in this in my transition. That's it. Pretty much everybody. So for else anyone out there who is who is struggling with their with their feelings over their gender identity and their 
they, they, they sort of identify with the transgender, transsexual communities. Um, take heart in knowing that our experiences and the information the caller just gave us um, there is a lot of support out there. Yeah. It's it's just your worst fears that everyone will abandon you. Yeah, yeah, and and certainly some of that does happen. But um, there are there are I still parents ask, that kick their kids out of their yeah, home, which is a horrible, horrible thing. But but um, but yeah, I, my I was very pleasantly surprised that um, <coughs> that it was not nearly yeah um, it, many orders of magnitude less than I expected. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, and honestly, pretty much everybody handled it very well. Yeah, there were a few exceptions, but... Um, it takes time. But yeah, You have to give people time to come do. to terms. You with have it. to let people have their own reactions. We talk about this sometimes. Um, but um, yeah. but and, yeah. And, and it can be tough because in a lot of cases, we've been dealing with this for years. And now it's like, all right, now I'm going to actually do it in transition. And we've had years of buildup. And everyone around you has had three and a half minutes. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I, I noticed, uh, let's see, I, I transitioned at work in 2008, in the fall of 2008, and so we're like a year and a half down the road from that. And, and I have a very good work environment. You know, it, took, it probably took a solid year for um, the broader work community where I am to stop feeling kind of weird around me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it took it took a good year yeah. for the transition to set in, but but yeah. it does happen. Yeah, people need to adjust, and and that's fine. Um, and and I'm perfectly happy to give people time to adjust and and let them adjust in their own ways. And you know, I've been very patient with everybody. But honestly, I'm you know I've been very pleasantly surprised. So so it was it was really. Honestly, a wonderful experience, um, aside from a few glitches. <laughs> One big glitch. Uh, yeah, I know. But, but um, <laughs> you know, it, all in all, um, it, it's one of those things that, you know, I made the choice. It was like I can be, spend the rest of my life either, well, if I live, I'll be miserable, or I can be happy, and I chose to be happy. And um, Oh, yeah, that, I mean, that, that, that was definitely my choice, was to spend the rest of my life a hermit. Yeah. Or spend the rest of my life um, solo, alone. I had no interest in seeking out any kind of relationship because I knew I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. I knew that uh, you know that I wasn't the real me, and that any relationship built on that lie was going to crumble. Um, and so I, I had prepared myself for a life of going to work and coming home to an apartment and living alone. Yeah. And I had about gotten to the point of accepting that um, when something in my head or some outside influence, mm -hmm. um, you know, pulled back on the string and you have that little moment of whiplash. No, I can't, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that because that every day was just getting more and more depressed. And I found myself taking more and more risks that would have endangered my and other people's lives ultimately. And I wouldn't have probably lived a very long life <laughs> going down that road. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah. fortunately I, I didn't have the experience where I was anything was imminent, but I was definitely headed down the wrong path. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's amazing, sort of, how much pain you can learn to live with. Um, I think you, you, and you know, certainly that's not something that's uh, exclusive to us. Yeah. Um, no. People no. do it every day. You learn to live with so much pain and misery, and. Uh, but I mean, as as Stacy said, you know, I mean, we 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 get we get pinged on from. Um, from some groups that this is a lifestyle choice that yeah. we, we choose to be this way and um, <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we choose to live this way and as Stacy said earlier it, the, the only choice involved is the choice of life right. is, is the choice to actually have a life do something more than just exist and occupy space that you know and and for everyone that I know that's been able to accept who they are and uh, and move forward uh, 
I have much better quality of life now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes too much life now. <laughs> 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 when you look at your calendar and there's only Excuse me, yeah. there's only two nights a week that you're free, and I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, kids adopt us, though. You know, it happens all, <laughs> happens all the time. If any of our adopted kids are watching, <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, When's spring very, break? It's very cool. It is very, <laughs> it's, it's very cool. Um, yeah, we've, uh, we've been adopted by some really wonderful people. And uh, yeah, it's nice. We have my, my grandson's coming this weekend, so that's so right. we'll have him. Um, he's uh, he's getting very big now. But, Young man. So I probably won't have him much longer before he gets a car <laughs> and doesn't want anything to do with us. He's already talking about his license. I know, I know. He's he's great, but he's already asked you if uh, if he's got, if he got a couple hundred dollars together, could you find him a junker? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did you say was, Unimog? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that would be interesting. He wouldn't be able to go very fast in it. <laughs> or very far. Or very far, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so it, that's going to be cool. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway. It's nice. It's nice to be loved. Yes. So, I'm happy. But it's been a very, very interesting experience, certainly. Um, it's it's just one of those things that um, it, you know, and and this is one of the reasons why I want to you know I've been trying to write some of this stuff down. It's just sort of amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how things sort of how things happen, how things progress, and and you can sort of look, and, and it's hard to see when you're in the middle of it. It is. It really is. It's sort of when you're looking back and going, wow, you know how sort of events can can sort of come into alignment to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And, and um, when I look back at my life and my transition, it's like, wow. <clears throat> it just kind of blows me away, the way th things just sort of fell into place and, and, uh, and how different it could have been. Well, I mean, you know, to, to, to take another tact at it, uh, you take a look at the, you know, some of the concepts of Taoism. And, and uh, you know, when, when you're on the right path, your 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 life force is aligned with the flow of the Tao. Things become very easy, and yeah. when you try to divert from from the, your right path, you get stuck in the eddies. Yeah, and and moving becomes difficult. Absolutely, I I was bucking the flow all my life, and uh, I didn't really under, fully understand it, but I certainly was. I was gravitating in that direction, my you know, in this direction, my entire life, and I just I fought. Well, you know what we say, you know, we fight this as long as we can, and then it right. wins. I really think that gender really it sits at the core of who you are as a biological entity. Yeah, and I'm fighting that is it's losing proposition. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So it's cool. Yeah, but, but anyway, enough of that. So what else is going on? We have a friend that got a cute little apartment on Bank Street. Yeah. The bum. I know. <laughs> I'd that, say I would, I would say helping I, move. I would say I hate him, but I don't. Yeah. Well. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so we'll be helping him. Out. Um, yeah, that is so cool. It's on Bank Street. I'm so jealous. Well, a um, couple other things that are here. Um, there is a benefit for the True Colors organization. Um, True Colors organization throughout the year provides uh, mentoring programs for GLBTQ youth. Um, it's a chocolate and cheesecake for a cause, mm -hmm. their seventh annual. Um, this is Friday, April 8th, 6 30 to 11 30 p.m. There is an open bar and a delectable assortment of cheesecake, desserts, and hors d'oeuvres. Um, Yes. And it's at Anthony's Ocean View, 450 Lighthouse Road in New Haven. There are uh, tickets that are required, and there's a discount if you purchase a table of 10. Um, that's also available at OurTrueColors.org, the cheesecake and ch chocolate and cheesecake for a cause. 
Oh, that sounds good. And the uh, Connecticut Gay Pride, um, uh, w we've been at the last several years up at the Bushnell Park in Hartford, is tentatively scheduled for June 4th. If everything comes together, June 4th in Bushnell Park ought to be the uh, Connecticut Pride event. Yeah. Yeah, we should be there. Um, that's always fun. Hopefully the weather will be nice. It was very hot last year. It was very hot last year. And, uh, and the safety inspector didn't like the fact that the, the tents were not s as securely anchored into the ground as he would prefer. Yeah. So we'll have to find some was, really big stakes. But he was cute and we gave him cheesecake. Well, we buy off everybody with food. <laughs> Are you selling anything? Do you have a vendor's license? No, sir. We're giving the food away for free. Yes. And it works. <laughs> you know what? If you give people cheesecake, they will come. <laughs> we'll have to make batches and batches of fudge this year, too. Behave. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yes. So it was, it was a good time. And we're going to do it again this year. I'll probably make some more mini cheesecakes. And, um, and so come up and come up to Hartford. You'll get mini cheesecakes. They always have great entertainment and great vendors and, and yes. uh, music all day long. Music all day long. All kinds of wonderful events going on. Mm. Lots so. of organizations that uh, you'd probably be interested in. Yeah, that's cool. So we'll be there. Um, but anyway, hopefully we'll get to do Mr. Connecticut is usually there. Mr. Connecticut. Mr. Connecticut Leather and yeah, Mr. Connecticut Bear and Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what's fun? It, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a carnival atmosphere. Last year we had the uh, stilt walkers one around the uh, what was it? Yeah. The, uh, um, Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil was in town for their their oboe performance. Yeah, so they were wandering around. And so they were wandering around the park <laughs> were, on their stilts. It was, it was dancing great. on their stilts. Yeah, it was. They cool. danced better on their stilts than most people did on the ground. Yeah, it was neat. It was a very carnival circus atmosphere. Yeah. Which was. Um, Silly but fun, and um, and so it was good. <laughs> but anyway, and we had politicians come around shaking hands and kissing babies. Yes, uh, down uh, Malloy was there. Yep, and uh, and various others. And various others, yeah. But, uh, well, various others sent their minions. Yeah, but he was there. He yes. was there. Yeah. Um, the, go the governor and, and the lieutenant governor were were there in person. Yes. It was kind of cool. It was a good. It's it's always nice there, and that's a beautiful park. Um, it is. I love that. And, and uh, yeah, you know, right there on, beneath the Capitol, we we have an incredibly beautiful state capitol. I think. Yeah, yeah it's true. Um, Which also happens to be where the Transgender Day of Remembrance happens every year. Yes, we did that this year. And that was a good We've run those shows several times so far, so. Yeah, I'm sure you guys <laughs> you probably know that. Y yes. We, well, and, and I apologize for that. We've been doing a lot of reruns, but the, the, the snow the has been, been horrible. Crazy. Well, the weather has been you all, you all know what the snow mm -hmm. has been like. It's been terrible. There right. have been several times the studio has been closed. They, you know, they, they had to close here. They were buried, and, and so we wound up with reruns. So. But uh, hopefully that won't happen much anymore. Um, this is a wrap. We, oh, we're out of time. Okay, um, so we have to go. We will see you next uh, week. Thanks for joining us, and um, have a good night.